Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make this really cute, adorable baby panel quilt. Now before I tell you where I got the fabric, I just want you to know that you can use this pattern technique that I'm using to create this for other panel squares that you may already have. But if you really like this fabric and you want to purchase it, it's called Magic Moon and you can get it at Joanne Fabric and Craft Store. Now, if you don't have a Joanne's near you, you can go on the internet, log on to their website, joanne.com, and just look up Magic Moon. Now, the sashing fabrics that I'm using, I used from my stash. I chose not to purchase the companion fabrics that came along with it. It's mostly because I have such a large stash and I knew if I came home with even more fabric my husband was going to get upset. So I decided just use what I have. So you can either use the companion fabrics that come with it or you can just look at the colors inside of each square and purchase fabrics or look in your stash for colors that will go with these squares. So now let me go over what you're going to need in order to make this really cute quilt. Now this quilt has a finish size of about 40 by 40 inches. The fabric panel again is Magic Moon. You can get it at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts or joanne.com. The sashing, you're going to need three different colors of sashing, one half yard of each. Out of fabric A, you're going to need six two and a half inch wide strips. Fabric B, four two and a half inch wide strips. And fabric C, four two and a half inch wide strips. Your fabric that you put on the back, you want it to be at least 44 inches wide and you'll need one and a quarter yards. You'll also need extra loft polyester batting the crib size package and you can either purchase it at Joann's or if you have a local Walmart store near you, you can also get it there. So let's get started on cutting out the fabric. Before you cut into the fabric, there are several things you need to do. So over here on each side of the panel is the raw edge. Do a zigzag stitch to bind those edges. Then wash it and then dry it and give it a good pressing all over it. Then we're going to do a rough cut around each of the panel sections and you're going to cut in the white area here in between. Do not cut on any of the dark lines yet. So you're just going to take your long ruler and with your rotary cutter begin cutting. After you've cut the top off then move down to the center and lay your ruler kind of in the middle and then cut again. Then when you get towards the end, going to move this. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to cut that bottom part off. Remember, do not cut on the lines. After you've cut there, then you're going to cut on each side. You're going to cut over here, cut this side off, come to the middle and cut in between and then come over here to the final side and cut off. Remember, do not cut in the dark lines. Now that you've got all of your squares cut out of the panel section itself, we're going to take each picture here, each fabric square, and cut it to size 14 by 14 inches square. Now three of the panels they're going to be very easy to square because there's a lot of border or background around this image here. All of these squares in the fabric panel as they come are not perfectly squared. They're kind of stretching in different directions. So this is why we need to cut them all the same size. One of the squares in the panel piece has 
the animals going all the way out to the edge. So you will lose some of this, but not very much. So I'm going to show you how to square these. If you have this 15 inch square ruler, it's really easy to do. First of all, put either some tape on the 14 inch line and then up here put a piece of tape where it's the corner of the 14 inch so you have two coming together and then of course then come over here and put one that marks the area that you're going to center your design in so what you want to do is center it the best you can all right you'll lose some of the design but not all of it once you have it centered and squared lined up then go ahead and take your rotary cutter and cut two sides cut across this way and then cut across this way after you've done that take this grab this corner up here and turn it and bring it here. Now take your 14 inch line here and here and place it on the two previously cut edges. So I'm going to put that 14 inch line on there. Line it up straight across. Make sure everything's good. Once you have it lined up, then cut your last two sides. Let me turn this around. And now it's 14 inches square. To cut the sashing out, you need to leave your fabric folded with selvage edges together. So leave them together like this. And then you're going to take the raw edge of your fabric and you're going to pull it past the zero line along here. And then the folded edge of the fabric goes on the one inch line right here. So go ahead and get that lined up. Make sure it's all going straight across. Take the edge of your ruler and place the edge on the zero line here as well as down here so you know that it is nice and straight. Take your time and make sure everything is straight. Then go ahead and cut it with a rotary cutter. Now don't move your fabric you're going to start cutting your strips by moving your ruler over two and a half inches. So here's the first line. And line up down here on the two and a half inch line. Once you have it lined up, do your first cut for your first strip. After you've done your first cut, don't move your fabric. Lift up your ruler and move over two and a half inches and line it up again. In which the two, next two and a half inches is on the five inch mark. And then cut the fabric. Cut your next strip. You'll keep doing this till you've got all of your strips cut out. So keep moving over two and a half inches from each previous cut and don't move your fabric until you've cut all of your sashing strips. After you've cut your squares out, you're going to lay them out and how I recommend you lay them out is you have both pinks going in opposite sides and the gray and the kind of greenish blue going opposite of each other. Then because these blocks are 14 inches square, you're going to cut two pieces of sashing, that's this here, that are 14 inches long. 
after you cut those two pieces out you're going to stitch it between the two blocks and stitch one quarter inch along there all the way across and stitch it on both sides then when you are pressing make sure your seams are pressed going towards the sashing so do that on both sections then once you have that stitched on and pressed measure the distance from this corner all the way across over to this corner then cut three pieces of sashing that measurement mine came out to 29 and 3 quarters so then lay them out to where it's now excuse me I'll lay this out this way lay it out where you're going to have one in between the rows then you're going to have one up at the top and then don't forget you always want to end it with one more at the bottom then you're going to do stitch it on the same way that you stitched your center pieces of sashing stitch them on both sides so you're going to stitch this side up here on then stitch this side together this side together and then go down and stitch the end together press all your seams on the back side then press them on top and again press all the seams towards the center of the sashing now your quilt top should look like this you've got all your sashing pieces in the center and then at each end now we're going to put on two more strips of sashing so what you're going to do is you're going to measure from this corner all the way down to this corner here and mine came out to 33 and 3 fourths so cut two pieces of sashing that length then you're going to add them on this side as well as the other side over here and stitch it on the same one quarter inch seam then press the seams and make sure you press the seam towards the sashing now your quilt top should look like this you have your first color of sashing stitched on now you're going to go to your next color of sashing and this is what I'm using for my next row of sashing whenever you switch to a new color you're always going to place it on the top and then go down to the bottom and that's where your next two places for stitching but before you stitch it on always measure the length you're going to need so measure from this corner here all the way across over to this corner and cut your sashing that length whatever that is then cut your two pieces bring it on top stitch one quarter inch go down to the bottom and do the next row so you're going to go from top to bottom stitch both strips on one quarter inch press your seams and remember always press the sashing seam towards the sashing when you're done with the top and bottom then you want to measure the other two sides whatever that length is from this corner here down to the bottom corner cut your sashing that length then go ahead stitch it on each side press and make sure you press all seams towards the sashing 
All right, I've just finished the last uh, section of sashing, the third row. Remember, to put the third row on, you're going to measure this row from corner to corner, cut two pieces of sashing that length, stitch them on the top and then the bottom, press it, and then you're going to measure for the last two sides the same manner, cut, stitch, and press. So this is what it looks like with the three different colors of sashing. Now you're ready to start layering the quilt with your polyester batting and your fabric on the back. Take the fabric you want to put on the back of your quilt. Leave that fabric folded from selvage edge to selvage edge. Then cut it for 44 inches wide, from raw edge to raw edge, 44 inches. Then unfold your fabric. Press any wrinkles out that might be there. Then take your extra loft polyester batting and lay it down on the table and then take your fabric for the back and lay it on top then cut around here a little bit larger than the fabric for the back and smooth it all out after you've cut real real good okay now I have all three pieces of fabric layered together here is my polyester batting here is the fabric for the back, and remember, it's back side down against the polyester batting. Then here is the quilt top. You're going to bring it front side down on top of your fabric for the back. You want to center this quilt top inside of this fabric here, so you have a, a little bit of fabric extending out past the edges of your quilt top. Then you want to go ahead and scatter safety pins throughout the top at the quilt top to hold all of the layers together. Then you're going to trim all four sides. So take your ruler, lay it on the edge of your quilt top, and then begin trimming it off. Now you're going to do all four sides like that. Then you're going to begin placing pins to hold the edges together through all three layers. And as you're pinning around, you want them fairly close together, you're going to leave an opening on one side so that your hand can go through and also big enough so that there's plenty of room to pull this quilt front side out. But before you pull it front side out, you need to stitch one quarter inch from this raw edge all the way around. Now remember, at all corners, when you get to the corner, leave your needle down, lift up your presser foot, turn your quilt, lower the presser foot, and then continue stitching down the other side. Now as you're coming back around, Here's where I started, but here I've got two pins indicating that this is where I want to stop. So come around, do some stitches back and forth here to secure it, and also at your starting point, do a few stitches to secure it there. There were a few things I forgot to mention earlier, is after you've trimmed this edge here, your first edge, then put straight pins to hold it. Then go to your next edge, side two, trim it, put your pins in to hold it, and keep doing that. This will prevent your fabric from shifting as you're moving it around as you're cutting. And one more thing I wanted to mention, before you go to your sewing machine, roll up your quilt like this. It'll make it so much easier to control it as you're stitching along each side. So as you finish one side, you get to the end, what you want to do is unroll it and re-roll it to go through to the next side. After you've stitched your quarter inch seam around all four edges, before you turn it front side out, you want to trim a little bit of this fabric 
off around the corner so that when you turn it right side out the edges won't be bulky but don't trim too close to your stitch line so just go ahead and take a little bit off on and a little bit off here and then a little bit off here then go ahead and turn it right side out after you've trimmed all four corners after you turn your quilt front side out and before you close up your opening here go to all four of your corners and poke them out now don't poke too hard you don't want to poke through your fabric and it, you won't get a super sharp point it'll be a little uh, stubby but that's the way it's going to turn out because of the thickness of the batting then fold the edges along here inside and pin it closed like you see here then you can have you two different ways you can do this you can either machine stitch real close to the edge to close up the opening or you can do a little hand sewn whip stitch just really tiny stitches to hold it closed or if you know a ladder stitch you can do that l-a-d-d-e-r ladder stitch after you've got your opening closed then you're going to go back to your sewing machine excuse me before you go to your sewing machine you want to put those straight pins again all over the top of your quilt to hold the layers together so you want to make sure you've got those all over and then if you have a walking foot that looks something like this now not all walking feet fit every sewing machine so if you have one that fits your machine great if you don't have one you can purchase these on the internet if you choose not to buy one you can still do your quilting stitches without it but you just want to be careful that you don't get any little pin tucks in the fabric so what you want to do is go to each square and stitch around the animal or whatever object is inside of it then after you've done all four squares then go over to all of the seams that hold the sashing together let me move this over a little bit there we go and you're going to do stitch in the ditch along all of these rows right here around all four sides and then at the center you want to make sure you do stitch in the ditch along all of your center sashing once you've completed that you are now done well i hope you decide to try this baby quilt it's a lot of fun you will learn a lot and it really is a cute quilt will make a wonderful gift for some cute little baby now if you want to keep informed on all of the future videos from the sewing room channel click on one of the subscribe buttons there's one down there in the lower right hand corner it's red it says subscribe and then there's a round picture of my face in the upper left hand corner click on either one of those when you do youtube's going to prompt you for your email address enter that information and then also click on the bell next to it to make sure you get notification it's a little bell icon once you do that and the next time i have a new video youtube will send you a brief email with a big button in the center you click on it and it'll take you directly to my latest video i'm cheryl and i'm so glad you came to my sewing room and i'm going to see you next time and happy sewing